Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there's someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. I'm going to assume this is Mia. <laughs> well, it's almost time. Yep. Mia! You must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's is either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. It's him. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well... When I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed... a bit... how shall we say, tired. <gasps> don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. <laughs> For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why... I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest. If you please. Wait! The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer Dude, who is that? Uh, no, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Where the heck's Francisca? Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. I say, Mr. Wright. No, I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? Uh, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor, please be quiet, bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor. Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning. Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What?! Shot?! Somehow... I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present?! Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. This... this is totally insane! Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I don't have that answer. Edgeworth? She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Whew! Your... I thought he'd show up. Yeah. Your Honor. Due to the circumstances, Miss Francisca Von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. Miss Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Wasn't that where her father was shot? 
Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. <sighs> now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. Detective Gumshoe! The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe! <laughs> yes, sir! Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah. It would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he is struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's a twist. I certainly didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see Edgeworth back. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corrida, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Interesting. Hmm... After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, I don't think there's really going to be a whole lot that we'll be able to gleam. Though the fact that Gumshoe repeatedly mentions the guitar when that really shouldn't have anything to do with this. Uh, is interesting. Then again, like, he and Edgeworth seem to be buddy-buddy with trying to help me out? So maybe it's them trying to help me help Maya. But, you know, they still have to, you know, do their jobs. Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8 p.m. and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Okay, so between 8 and 8.30 is when the murder happened. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt on guard's manager. She's a real pretty lady, sir. Huh, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Matt on guard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see, and that's when she found the victim's body. Okay, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, we, believe, we believe he was definitely murdered. No, he he accidentally slipped on the steak knife in his chest. The cause of death, wasn't that because Mr. Corita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good look. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now, real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Hmm, banana? Uh, his bandana, sir. That, that's the thing. Tightly wrapped around his neck, sir. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I see. His banana scented bandana. 
Then what about the knife? Oh yeah, I didn't even notice the bandana before. It seems to have been struck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Oh, it's a plant. Interesting. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Interesting. Strangled with a scarf. And then after he was dead, he was stabbed with the knife. An estimated time of death is around 8.15. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the guitar case. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. Jammin' Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How's that? Uh, we thought of that too, but um... But... The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Oh, so much for my theory then. Interesting. It only has Corita's fingerprints. But the guitar was seemingly gone the whole time. So, so he must have opened the guitar case at some point and either gave the guitar or it was already opened. He might have given the guitar to someone. If it was Adrian. Uh, the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The Bray Red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. Oh, interesting. The victim, Juan Carita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yep, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why, then, did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Okay. So, mm, entirely just gathering information, which is nice. But yeah, why rest on guard? Matt on guard and Juan Carita were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's not enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja costume and was found in Matt on guard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. He did what now? Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Ha! Huh. Bears the victim's blood and on guard's fingerprints. In the grip, gate water is engraved. So he bought the knife from the hotel? And there's this button. This was found in the defendant's clothes, wasn't it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Phoenix, how was that surprising? It was ripped from this costume, is covered in Corita's blood, and was found in Ungard's Hakama. All this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Heh. <laughs> I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. Ugh. Okay, so it looks like we do need to actually find something here. 
Okay, Matt and Juan were huge rivals. Let's just start there. But in terms of popularity, Matt on guard won, did he not? Yeah. But you know what's ironic, pal? Juan Carrito was always one step behind Matt on guard in everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Carrito lost the Grand Prix in the end. That is too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. Okay. He each thought that the other guy was in the way. We just one second here! Mr. On Guard was beating Mr. Corita in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all! Hmm, yes, I quite agree. Well, detective? Uh, it's not... well... I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Objection. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Ah! No, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. No! No, no, detective, let's continue with the testimony. No! Too. Detective! If you value your money, I suggest you proceed! Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. Uh, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? It's like, huh, yes, he does not have a motive! Continue with the testimony! Yes, sir! And completely ignore everything. Okay. No, nothing there. Do you have any proof that button belonged to the victim? Huh? What do you mean, pal? Oh, uh, let me put it this way. I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off the Jammin' Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell by just looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it. Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir! Alright, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now the reel this one in. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it! That's a perfect match, pal! Ugh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. Which means, I mean, he did say that he researched the whole thing. And to be fair, he did give us evidence in preparation for it, but still. <laughs> it's like, damn. Even just looking at the minute details at the thread matches. It was ripped off the ninja costume and was found on the Hakama. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found. We rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Karita. And then we did a search on the mall. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks. Unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? Okay, nothing there. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? Oh, what do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? We didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm. So is the defendant the owner of this knife, then? Defendant 
bought the knife for the crime. See, that's the weird thing, because it says gate water. So, it's a hotel knife. There's no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal, this isn't some pocket knife. It doesn't fold, so it's not great for walking around with, either. Ugh. Well, this is not good. The prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder we're done for. Phoenix. Yes? There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully, before it's too late. A button covered in the victim's blood, and a knife with a guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in the world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay, Phoenix? Okay, so it's clearly the last one. So is, it's the premeditated part? Let me listen to see what specifically Gumshoe said. Okay, this isn't a pocket knife. It doesn't fold, so it's not great for walking around. But what would be interesting? Okay. So either it's that or just saying that... Hmm. Would it be the knife itself? Okay, nothing there, nothing there. That doesn't really help. That doesn't really help. I mean, nothing there is really pointing at anything. None of this stuff is really helpful. There's the button. But none of that really makes it premeditated. The only thing that... The only thing I can think of is because the knight straight up says gate water. So that would tell me that, like, it says bought the knife for the crime. How? It's a gate water knife. Um, you know, just to make sure that I don't get too far off track because I get the feeling that there's going to be a lot because this is the last case of the game. I'm just going to make a safe state now. The last thing I want is a repeat from the last case where I basically had to spend 15-20 minutes fast forwarding through everything to get back to where I was. Okay, I think it is just the knife. Because it's a gate water knife. It's the hotel there. Wait a second! Oh, what? So the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Uh-huh. Take a good look at the handle of this knife and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a gate water seal set into the handle. Gate water? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel! The Gate Water Hotel! Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't... Oh. Oh. The question is... 
where did this knife come from? Why is that obvious? Why, that's obvious! It came from the victim, Mr. Corita's room. No, it came from on guard's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There's a knife and fork on the table! Then... Where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court. I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt Ungard. Especially what was on top of his table. There's something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ungard's knife was missing. Ugh. Mr. Ungard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? <laughs> to kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant! A brilliantly clear deduction! Seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps and I just walked headlong into it! A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? It means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, that gavel of his will be ringing out the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to the court? Do we? What? What hasn't been? What hasn't been shown to the court yet? The guitar case has, the knife has, the button has. As well as the autopsy report. Honestly, well, the weird thing is, is like, why would it be premeditated if he didn't use the knife to actually murder? But the autopsy report is something that we have seen. Everything dealing with Adrian is not something that we really need yet. And the murder photo, I believe, has been? The wine glass hasn't. The map hasn't, but that doesn't really do us any good. Uh, everything dealing with Adrian is irrelevant at this point. The press conference, maybe? I mean, it's either gonna be the press conference ticket or the wine glass. Maybe the wine glass? Because the weird thing is, is like, why have the Nickel Samurai confess something? But none of that really changes anything. But then there's the wine glass. Why is the wine glass the one thing that was untouched in all of this? When everything else is shown very clear signs of struggle. Uh, I'm gonna try. I did save not too long ago, so if I need a reload, it's not that far. There's one. 
one piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I'm giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. I messed this up. It's curtains for all of us. Oh god, it literally is! You may pre now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Ooh boy, they do not mess around on this one, because yeah, I am not 100% convinced. Ah, uh... There's everything to do with Adrian and the scandal. But none of that, I feel, is relevant at the moment. There's still this damn wine glass. It's shown there, and it's been like, huh, that's weird. But it hasn't actually done anything. But yeah, that is the interesting thing. Why have this sign of a struggle, and then have this one random wine glass with tomato juice in it? The only thing I can rule out is stuff that the court has already seen. The button's been seen, the knife's seen, the autopsy report's been updated, the guitar case has been updated. The wine glass hasn't, though. Well, I mean, if I screw up, then you know what? I have a save from not that long ago. I don't have to go back super far. I... I I'm not confident, but let's go for the wine glass. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The face was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However... This glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well... What do you all have to say? Oh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was! You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion. Because there's no special meaning to that glass. What?! It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? No! We, we know that Juan loved tomato juice! Do we have any evidence to kind of back that up, though? Uh, let's see. On bad terms with on guard. Intelligent woman who seems to have it all to- An intelligent woman who seems to have it all together. I mean, there's that. But it's also one of those things where it's like, the tomato juice is literally right there. So she would have to have been so absent-minded to have placed the glass down there as well as the glass that she had done it or was so blasé that she poured herself a glass and that's just not possible no she did not put that glass down without thinking if i appear weak here the trial's over 
can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. You just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm. You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints? There are only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims, nor the defendants. Rather, they were of one Adrian Andrews. What?! Okay, so she did pour the wine glass. Just why? That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ugh, I can't believe I fell into another trap! Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corita. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Now do you see, right? You can't change any part of my scenario, as it explains everything all too well. <laughs> I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I've come to discover. Oh, wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? Yeah, I mean, he could win the case right now. Oh, God. Right. She did say she would be a witness. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Ugh! <laughs> gotcha! Ugh! happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy! It's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet, it was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand! I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even the things I don't have to do with a terrible crime. M Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all the court needs to know. No! Shush! I'm talking to my dear edgy witchy right now. Don't interrupt the scramps! Yes, madam. No, 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 please! By all means interrupt her, please! Anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dearie Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. 
You mean you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone's crazy over that on guard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Carita. Uh, but those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well, please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo! Alright, we'll get through the testimony and then we'll call it a day. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was a guard, mad on guard, who was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Let me guess. Adrian came in to kill Juan using Matt's costume. God, this literally is just a repeat of the Steel Samurai, if that's the case. Hmm, so Mr. On Guard came out from the victim's room. See, it had to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So, next time on Let's Play, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. We are going to press Old Bag on her testimony because this really does start to feel like a repeat of Steel Samurai. So until next time, everyone, take care.